Howdy. We're here to talk to you about avoiding stepping in it. You know what the it is that I'm referring to. Stepping in it when your seller has remorse about selling. This video will focus on situations where your seller has remorse before they accept any offer. So I'm envisioning a situation, for example, where the seller receives a full price offer for the amount that you identified in the MLS. It's an all cash offer. The offer is submitted with proof of funds and the buyer has even tendered the earnest money with the offer. You're excited, you present that to your seller and your seller says, nah, I changed my mind or you know, I talked to my spouse and if I sold this property, my marriage would end. No, I'm not accepting the offer. And so the question is, is does, do your sellers have an obligation to accept full price cash offers where the, the buyer can demonstrate that the buyer is ready, willing, and able to close on the purchase? And the at least the conventional answer is no. The seller does not have an obligation to accept that offer. The conventional wisdom is, is that when a seller markets the property, it is considered a solicitation of offers to the seller that does not create what lawyers or the law calls the power of buyers to accept that offer and form a contract. Now, having said that, there still can be some consequences for the seller because you hopefully have an exclusive right to sell agreement with the seller that says you are entitled to a commission if you produce a ready, ready willing, and able buyer. There is also the possibility that you have no choice but to pursue the seller for that commission because there might be the broker who procured the buyer who might be coming after you alleging that they're the procuring cause, that that buyer's broker is the procuring cause. Let me address the procuring cause situation first. I have never handled that case. I've never handled that case where the buyer's broker goes after the listing broker for a co-op commission in the situation where the seller does not accept the offer. I've never had to handle that case. But the, the conventional wisdom, and I don't believe there's any precedent, at least in the state of Colorado, addressing this, is remember, in order for the selling broker to be a procuring cause broker, they have to produce a buyer uh, they have to they have to produce a buyer that resulted in a successful transaction. And the argument that the listing broker has to resist paying a co-op commission in these circumstances, the argument that the listing broker has is there was no closing, there was no successful transaction. I think that argument would carry the day. Having said that, don't have decisive precedent, don't have an answer for you for sure. And the buyer has the counter argument. I get it that there wasn't a transaction, that there wasn't a closed transaction. I get it that there was not a, sell, a successful transaction. However, the failure is not due to anything on my side. The failure is on your side. You have the ability to protect yourself by going after the seller because of the ready, willing, and able to clause in your exclusive right to sell listing agreement. Now, as you can imagine, um, most brokers uh, choose not to go after their seller in these circumstances. Um, but uh, let me just mention a few factors that come into play where it might be worthwhile for you to go after your seller who just changes their mind, uh, refuses to sell after you have produced a buyer who is clearly or pretty clearly a buyer who was ready, willing and able to close. Uh, among the factors that might enhance the likelihood that you would go after the buyer are things like how long have you had the listing? You know, how, how, how much, how much uh, blood, sweat, and tears have you invested in this relationship? Another one is how much money have you invested uh, in this? You know, you pay for things like professional photography and drone photography and staging, uh, et cetera. Um, another, another factor is, uh, you know, what's the likelihood that the seller will change their mind? Uh, it is possible that the pressure from you, um, perhaps through an aggressive letter from your lawyer, perhaps even through a filed lawsuit, uh, will 
uh, motivate the seller to do what the seller intended to do when the seller signed the listing agreement. Uh, another, another, um, con another consideration uh, for you, and obviously uh, the, perhaps the second biggest one, the second biggest consideration is uh, what's at stake, right? I mean, if we're talking about one side of a $5 million deal, um, then, you know, we're talking about perhaps a six-figure commission amount. And that's a lot more likely that it's worthwhile for you to go after commission that we're talking than, than if we're talking about one side of a $400,000 transaction. And then the last thing is, is what's the likelihood that a counterclaim will come against you for malpractice? Well, there are some situations where there's no risk. You know, there's some situations where you have a, an email from your seller client who says, I feel terrible about this. Uh, we're so, um, uh, we feel so bad about doing this. Uh, don't worry, we'll, reimb we'll reimburse you for all your hard uh, cost expenses. And when we list the property again, when we're ready to sell, we're definitely coming back to you, um, but we're not gonna sell. Well, in that situation, you have a trail that they're happy with you. You don't have any risk of uh, counterclaim or very low risk of counterclaim. So I mentioned this not to push you into going after your seller clients, but just so you know, that is a possibility you can. But in the meantime, don't threaten your seller clients that the buyer is going to come after them because the conventional wisdom is the buyer does not have any claims in that situation in spite of the fact that the buyer is a full price offer, ready, willing, and able to close. All right, thanks for watching this far. Remember, it's complicated out there. Be careful.